We're starting a new series today called Focus Forward. And as many of you know, uh, well, we launched three services today. Um, and we are uh, almost all the way done with um, architectural designs and structural drawings and all that mess that you have to go through to build a new building. And so uh, I'm really excited about it. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to show you a really, really nice picture of it. But um, that's going to come off the building this way and it'll, it'll seat almost, uh, almost three times as many people as, as we can seat here. Uh, and you'll be able to do it and you won't be in like economy seating. <laughs> like, you know, the chairs are kind of close together today. So, um, so we're excited about that, excited about what God is doing in that. And so we're going to be talking about that over the next month or so. We are going to be launching a capital campaign. Um, buildings don't build themselves. Amen. And so they don't pay for themselves either. You guys own houses. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I just thought I was going to pay for itself. Uh, so um, we believe this is, a, this is what God has called us to do. Reach as far and wide as we possibly can. And so uh, we have uh, used this building about to its capacity. And that's why we went to three services. And, and so uh, we're, we're planning for the future to be able to reach more and more people uh, for the kingdom. And so uh, I want to let you know that, that uh, we're doing the most frugal job we can possibly do. And um, I know I'm a pastor, but I'm beating people up on prices, man. They come into the office. I'm just like, it's too much. You're the devil. Um, you call somebody the devil, they'll drop the price. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was just praying about you, and it wasn't good. So you better lower the price. <laughs> I don't say that. But anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about that. But I wanted to uh, talk to you today about making sure our focus was right before. You know, Paul, Paul said that he forgot what was behind him, and he strained towards what was ahead. And that's important. And that I wanted to talk to you today about getting our focus right. So uh, why don't we stand one more time? We're going to read scripture together. I think we got all of our technical deals worked out with this service. We're going to have a little bit of fun today, hopefully, if all the technology works out right. John chapter 5. Sometime later, start verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there's, a, there's um, in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five, co five colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in the condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is stirred, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. And then if you read the rest of that, they, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law start hammering the guy for carrying his mat on the wrong day. Can't religion just get all weird? But I want us to get our focus right this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We thank you for your word today. God, it has the infinite ability to change us every time we look at it, Lord. We pray that it would do that this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and everyone said, amen, amen and amen. Turn around and tell somebody, you better get your focus right. You better get your focus right. I've learned a little bit over the years about video, uh, like kind of, I don't really know much about photography, but I know a little bit about video. I have, I've edited videos before on a computer, and um, so I know a little bit about it. I know, I know enough from working with Pastor Sam and Dylan Hahn while he was here that, um, that the lens you use is important, and the lighting you use is important. Uh, and, and what happens in our lives when trouble comes is we tend to only use uh, like a tight angle or a zoomed in lens. Is that true? Like, man, I'm really going through it and I'm just zooming in on the issue. 
Anybody here like that where you just, man, you just drill down, focus in, you're like, this is all you see is, is that there's not enough or there's a sickness or there's a problem or there's a crazy Uncle Jimmy or whatever it is that there, this is what you're facing right now and you can't see anything else in your life. You're just focused on it. So when you're at Walmart, somebody says, how you doing? Oh, man. <laughs> By the way, can I let you know that's why they don't ask you anymore how you're doing? You know those family reunions where you know the crazy aunt and you walk up to her and you're like, how are you doing? Oh, well. <laughs> so everybody's like, she's here. We focus so much on the issue at hand. And what we forget about is that, is that God actually gave us the ability to see wide angle, right? Isn't it amazing that I could see my hands way back here but yet when trouble comes, we don't see any of that. We just, we just zoom in with the tightest lens we could get. And all we see is the issue. We don't, we don't know anything that's happening behind the scenes. We don't know anything that's going on behind us. We just see what is happening right in front of us. But the amazing part is we serve a God who knows everything all the time at every moment, right? The Romans 8.28 says that, that he is working all things for our good. Even the things that you can't see because we're so focused. And I was thinking about that today. One of the things, let's see if we could work this, Brendan. Technology is awesome until it's not. Are, are we connected? Let me see. Now we are. If I get a text message, just ignore it. People text me during the service. They know I'm a preacher. I don't get it. Like, um, okay, this is not really good, but, but okay, watch this. I picked on Donna the first, now I'll get Skip. Watch this. There's Skip, right? But you know what? <laughs> you know what? I can get close enough to Skip that you don't even know that anybody else is here. I could get so close to Skip that it looks like he's all by himself in a, in a room full of people. And what oftentimes Satan does to us is he tells you, you're the only one dealing with this. <laughs> right? You're the only one's got the trouble. You're the only one's got the problem. You don't know anything that's going on. You're the only one that deals with this. <laughs> you have no idea <laughs> that anything else is happening behind the scenes. But what happens is if you zoom out a little bit, look at all at all these people and look at face recognition isn't that awesome <laughs> look, all these people here's here's what else you don't realize is that technology will let us do this you don't know that there's all these people back here you have no idea there's steve drinking a coffee keeping us safe and there's there's all these people back here working like crazy doing the right thing you have no idea there's people back in that room you have no idea you have no idea that all these things are happening behind the scenes. Woo. Did it work? Right? I wanted to give those people back there some love because uh, they deal with your kids. <laughs> Here's a man who was invalid for 38 years. He's sitting by the pool. And he is complaining now we know he's complaining because the first time Jesus has a, the first time Jesus says anything to him, what's in his heart comes out of his mouth, right? Can I tell you that we need to be thinking about that when people ask us questions, what's in our heart comes out of our mouth. So, so people will automatically know what you've been focused on. How are you doing today? You know what? Considering I'm doing pretty well, the God of all the universe is working behind the scenes for my benefit, according to Romans 8.28, and I could have every opportunity to be sad and upset right now and down on life and tell you all that, but I know that behind the scenes, God is working for my good. But instead of saying that, we know he says something else because he says, I've been laying here. And now there's this weird phenomenon that happened that an angel would come down through the water and, the, and, the, and they indicate that the first guy that got in the water would be made whole. Now, I don't know if that's exactly what was happening or if that was their perception of it, but the guy was complaining that nobody would help him down to the water. 
He says, every time the water is stirred, then, I, then people are climbing over me to get there. But what the guy didn't know is he's sitting by a pool of water that he can't get to, but the son of God just walked in the room. And so what we do is we, we keep our focus on the fact that I can't get where I want to. And meanwhile, God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. He said, he didn't come uh, just, for you to, just for you to do things for him. He came to lay his life down as a ransom for many. He said that he was gonna go to the cross and die and be raised on the third day. And that and that that blood that was shed to atone for our sin would also atone for our healing. What this man sitting by the pool waiting on the water to be stirred didn't realize that Emmanuel, God with us, had just walked into town. And so what happens is we focus, we've got that zoom tight lens that only focuses on what we're dealing with, what we're dealing with, what we're de- how bad it is right now. And what happens is we have no idea that all around us God is working for our benefit. The same guy that could complain about not getting in the water really had no no knowledge that God had just walked up to him. How often does that happen in our lives? We complain and we just focus so tight. We have no idea that God is orchestrating things for our good. I mean, you just heard it this morning right before the offering. Joe said that they kept going around until they found a crooked uh, accountant to give him more money. (laughs) That God was working that for his benefit. The, the crazy part is, is uh, my wife told me this year we were going to have to pay taxes. And I thought, well, we, if Joe's getting more money back, we need to go find another accountant. <laughs> and then I realized my wife was my accountant. And I'm like, makes things difficult in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to find somebody a little better at this. <laughs> Let me just give you some life advice. Honesty is always better than money when it comes to your taxes, Okay. I claim ignorant spouse. I'm just like, she did it. I have no idea. (laughs) Innocent. Ignorant innocence. (laughs) Our Zoom is so focused, so tight on the issue we have. Jesus Jesus walks up to the man and he says, do you want to be made whole? Now I want to propose to you that's a yes or no question, right? Yes or no question. That wasn't an interview. But don't we oftentimes turn what God is asking, yes or no question, we switch up the response. Don't you hate that about politicians? Don't you hate that about when people do that? Hey, here's a question. Ah, well, I think I'd rather answer it. I think the better thing is I think Jesus walks up to this man and says, do you want to be made whole? And the guy says, well, I can't, I can't get to the water. Every time the water's stirred, I don't have enough strength to drag myself down there and nobody around here is going to help me. And so he takes a yes or no question and turns it into something else. And Jesus isn't asking him, do you want me to drag you down to the water? He's asking him, do you want me to make you whole? Do you want to be whole today? And the guy, well, you know, that's impossible. And there's often times where God comes to us in our lives and he says, hey, do you, want, do you want to be made better today? And we go, God, you know what? I've been struggling with this so long. I've got to figure out how I need to be fixed. And what you're offering me is not that. And what we can do is because our focus is so narrow, we're focusing on getting to the water instead of God making us whole. We're focused on how we think we can get out of this. We're focused on how our, we think our marriage should be better because it's the other person's fault. And God is coming to us saying, hey, do you want a better marriage? Yeah, Lord, but you, <laughs> my husband. I've been married 38 years, Lord. And it's not getting any better. No, 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 I didn't ask you about your current situation. I asked you, I didn't ask you about how you were struggling to make yourself better. I was asking you if you want to be made whole. Well, Lord, but you know my wife. Or do you know the boss you gave me? This ain't going to work. You know, you got to give me a different job. No, no, no. I didn't say I was going to drag you down to the water. See, what happens is when we focus so tight, we think the water is the only answer. When the, when the answer is standing in front of us, asking us if we want to be better. Jesus is not saying, I'll drag you down to the water. He said, I'll make you whole without the water. But what happens in our lives is we're only focused on the solution that we approve of, right? Lord, you've got to give me more money now. 
And God said, I can make you better with the money you have. Oh. <laughs> You're like, no, he can't. No, no, tried it. Tried it last year, didn't happen. I don't know about you, but I've always figured out the solution. Haven't you? Lord, if you do it this way, boy, people would praise your name. And so would I. My life will be so good, everybody be asking me, how come you're so blessed? But you know what? I think God sometimes wants to reveal to people that, that he can sustain us and our testimony be that he is with us and he's faithful and he's working behind the scenes rather than just standing up in our glass houses going, man, my life is better than yours. But, we've, but, but one of the things in my life is that it hardly ever works out the way I planned it out. Because I'm so focused that I've got, I've got it worked out the way you should do it. And Jesus showing up just saying something doesn't fit in. I, Lord, I was planning on getting in the water. But now you're here asking me if I, I, this seems like a pointless conversation. Just drag me down to the water. None of these other people will help. So, so what happens is, um, here's something else I found out about video and photography that it's really important where you shine the light, right? And you can make a room full of people seem like one person if you shine the light, just like the lens. If you shine the light the right, right way, you can hide things. You know, we were always told, and it is true that light pierces darkness, and it does, but if you've got a really focused light beam, then, then, then you can only illuminate what you want to see. And... Um, and using light and video and photography is, is amazing. I love looking at pictures where people do it well. I, I can't, I got an iPhone. I got a camera at home, but it's got settings on it. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> it always seems to be bad. Um, but, but, but if I, I get the right lighting, and, and, and here's what happens. It's always easy in church to do this. Because we're together, everybody's smiling when you come in. We started three services. This is awesome. My church is better than yours, right? You know, we're like, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. Great. You're going to build a building. It's amazing. Church, yeah, it's amazing. What happens is, uh, if you're not in a connect group, <laughs> shameless plug for your weekly connect groups. What happens is that the middle of the week comes. Oh, it's easy to be in a group of people like this with the music cranking, feel the bass guitar. And you're like, God, yeah, I am yours. Lift our heads, I am yours. All my days, yeah, I'm yours. And so is this person I'm married. And I'm believing, God, that you're going to do something about it. I'm trusting you. I'm shining the light. What happens is Monday comes. Tuesday, Wednesday, and if you're not in a connect group, you don't have any help in the middle of the week. You just got that spouse. <laughs> got them bills, right? Got them problems in the middle of the week. And then this is what happens. You guys going to help me? Yeah, this is what happens. Lord, I know I was in church Sunday, but it's Wednesday and that bill hadn't went away. It's, it's, it's Thursday and I'm still dealing with that coworker. It's, 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 it's Friday and I'm still dealing with this illness, Lord. And I don't, I don't know. I can't fix it. It's not, nobody will help. I can't get down to the water. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. God, this is all I see. This is all I know. This is everything. This is it. I don't know what to do. And God, I can't figure it out. It's just, it's just I can't figure it out, Lord. And what happens is, you have to understand that what happens is that, is that you have to move the light before anything happens. Did you hear that? You have to move the light before anything happens because, because one thing about light is it can either illuminate just one thing or it can illuminate a whole bunch of stuff. 
And you have to be able to move it by faith before anything happens. And so what happens is when you go like this, now I'm lighting up. The Bible says that, that it's a light for your path, right? I don't know about you. Anybody ever went hunting before? This is not how you hold the flashlight when you're walking through the woods at five o'clock in the morning. Because you're going to hit a tree, fall down, shoot yourself with your own gun. You know, you're just like, oh, Lord, oh, I'm so focused. No, no, no. You walk like this. It's a light into my path. And so the issue is you have to move the light before anything happens. Because if this is all I'm focused on, this is all I'll see. If this is all the lens I have, this is all I'll see. But if I'll put a wide angle lens on and I'll do the right lighting, then, all I, then I see, oh, wait a second. He says he's a lifter of my head. He said he's working all things for good for me. He's working behind the scenes. Now, I can, now, now things are lighting up that I didn't even realize were happening. Now I'm seeing things go in my favor that I didn't even realize. Now I understand that I am getting help. Now I understand that he is faithful when I don't even see things going my way. I, I know he's working behind the scenes. All because I changed the light, but it doesn't mean anything has happened different. And so what, what we want to happen is we want really tight focus, and then we want to see things change. But you won't see it. Because Jesus could walk right up to your little pool, your pity party pool. He can walk right up to your little pity party pool and say, do you want to be better? Do you want to be whole? And you're going to say, you know what? I can't get to the water. I can't get to the water. Watch this. Turn the light back on. That illustration was wearing out. One of the things, it says the guy was cured immediately. But I don't know how many seconds or minutes it took for him to stand up. Work with me on this a little bit, all right? Because here's what I'm imagining. If I was an invalid for 38 years and some random dude walked up to me and said, do you want to be made whole? Pick up your mat, get up and walk. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want, I want to be made whole. Now, the Bible says that he was instantly cured. But what happens in my life oftentimes is I can be instantly cured and not even know it happened. The solution can be standing in front of me, but I'm not aware that it took place. And so I'm just telling you in my life, there are moments where I sit after I've been told to stand. There have been moments that after the strength has come back into my legs, that it takes me a few minutes for this thick-skulled uh, male, I want to done my way, Lord. It takes me a few minutes to figure out, wait a second, wait a second, I, I, I think my legs are working now. I could be wrong, but I think they're starting to work a little bit, and I'm going to give this thing a shot. And what, can I, can it, will you promise you won't get mad at me? Go ahead and say it up front. I won't get mad at you. All right, watch this. Watch this. We will sit down after being healed because now our identity is going to change. And what we were comfortable complaining about in the past is going to be taken from us. And so, listen, when there's no more conversation about how bad it is, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the Bible says. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one. He's the one. What am I going to do? I'm going to change my focus. Now I'm going to change the light and I'm going to fix. He's the lifter of my head. I'm going to fix my eyes on him. And that means my story has to change now. Because he healed me, I can't go back to complaining about not getting drugged to the water. So let me tell you something. This is difficult for people because now all of a sudden I have to change to a positive attitude and I'm, I'm nervous I'm not going to have anything to talk about. Because for 38 years, my story has been, I can't do it. And now all my excuses are gone. Ah, I don't know about you, but the worst place in my life is when I don't have an excuse. I'm going to tell you something. I've sat in offices before. I've sat in this church office. A pastor Don was a, was a lead pastor. I'm a lead pastor now, so I'm going to do it to people. 
sit in my, I'd sit in his office and say, Christy, y'all stop doing that. And, and I'd be like, I got an excuse, I think. <laughs> but when I didn't have an excuse, I'd be like, you're exactly right. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. You're exactly right. Because the worst place in my life to be is oftentimes when I don't have an excuse for, for why I'm still sitting there. And I want to tell you this morning that God, every day I believe, is standing right at the foot of our bed when we walk up and he's saying, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made well? And what we're doing is we're changing the subject. Lord, I can't get to the water. And he's saying, I need you to change your focus and see what I'm doing all around you. I need you to change where the light's shining before anything happens and see that I am on your side, faithful, never leave you, never forsake you. I am working all things for good. I am doing this for your benefit. I need you to see that. By the way, get up and pick up your mat. You, you want me to stand up now. But I've been... I've been like this 38 years. I don't think I can just stand up. Yeah, you can stand up. Come on, stand up. You can do this, stand up. And I wanna tell you that, that I believe there's people in this room not, right now that God has declared wholeness over your life, but you're still sitting in the same place. You're still sitting in the same difficulty, even though he's told you, I can heal you. You're saying, yeah, but you're not dragging me anywhere. That's because I want you to stand up, you're healed. That's because I want you to operate in faith. I said you're healed. Now the faith part is that you believe it. Amen. Oh, you said I was healed. Oh, okay, let me try this out. It's been a while. Let me see. Wow, I haven't felt I haven't fallen over yet. Okay. Can we just talk practically how much muscle deterioration had happened over 38 years? <laughs> Can we just talk practically of how much, how much you've lost sitting in the same place over 38 years to the point where it might not even feel like it's going to ever work. But when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords walks in and says, do you want to be made whole? Yes, absolutely. I do. Stand up. Okay. 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 This is new to me, God. <laughs> this is new. Now. I told you that we were going to be um, launching a capital campaign. You're like, here he comes. He's going to ask for money. Here he comes. Here he comes. Today, I wanted to make sure we got our focus right. Because there's been times in my life where I missed an opportunity because I didn't want to get better. There's been times in my life where I missed an opportunity where God emphatically said, do you want to be made whole? Yes, stand up. No. Here's an opportunity to stand up. No, I don't think I can stand up right now. Here's an opportunity to give. I can't give right now. Here's an opportunity to see my glory go for it. I can't do it right now. No, I told you you were whole. I know, I know what you said, but my light's still pointed in the same spot. I know what you said, but I still got the narrow focus on. I know what you said, but I, I got friends around here who, who, who we just, we got the same story, man. And if, and if, and if I stand up, what, what's going to happen? I know what you said, and there's been opportunities I have missed to see God's glory operate in my life and in and through me because he said, you're whole, go ahead and get it done. And I went, God, I don't see it. And he said, Chris, before it's going to happen, you've got to change your focus. You've got to change the light. And so I know, what, I know what some of you are thinking. I saw you walk in this morning, $100 bills hanging out of your pockets, y'all, you filthy rich. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest church you ever walked into. Like, Whoa, we're just going to praise God today. Whatever falls out is his, right? <laughs> okay, we got three minutes. Stand up. I want to I finish with this. Watch. Some of you, some of you, the church is, is growing. More people are coming to Christ. More people are being ministered to. More people are volunteering. The gospel is going forward. People are traveling around the world to, to see that gospel go. For, like, it, it's, a, it's a really neat thing that's happening. But here's what happens. Some, some of this gives some of us anxiety. Did you hear me? Some of, it, some of this... 
gospel going forward and advancing and buildings and multiple locations and multiple times, it gives us anxiety because we're still sitting by the pool. And, and, and we start talking about, man, let's, let's, let's make this happen. Let's, let's do it. We're, we're still going, God says, hey, do you want to be whole? And you say, yeah, Lord, but you know I can't afford any of that. I can't do it. You know I can't. You know I can't. You know I can't. You know I can't. And the reason I started out with, with this this week is because I believe that if we change our focus, if we change what we're shining the light on, then all things are possible. Amen? Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, all things are possible according to the power that works within you. All things are possible. And I want to let you know this. The most money I've ever given away in my life towards seeing the gospel go forward, I didn't have in my pocket when I made the commitment. I'm not recommending you do that. <laughs> You're like $100,000 on the pledge card. <laughs> God, I'm just believing. No, here was my prayer, and my wife will attest to this. I pray, God, it was one of my friends going out into ministry, doing something totally different, walking away from his job, walking away from everything. And I just said, God, I want to be a huge part about that. I don't know how it is, but I believe you can do something through me. What, here's what I told God. I believe, I believe you can make me whole in this area, and I'm just going to stand up. And there's somebody else that could testify how that worked out in here because we kind of did it together. And, and he's been a contractor for a long time. And I can tell you right now, he's shaking his head the whole time. He's like, I can't believe this is working out this way. I was like, dude, I prayed. It's over. Done. <laughs> no, but it was that simple prayer. Lord, I don't know how it's going to work out. I, I know I don't have that amount of money right now, but I believe that you can work through me. I'm not going to rob a bank for it. Just back up. But, but I believe you can do this through me. I want to play a part. And, and, and bless him. And you know what? Not only did we get to bless the guy stepping out, I got to explain the whole story to a guy we were doing work for that didn't believe in God. Amen. So here's all I want you to do this morning. I just want you to put the wide angle lens on, shine the light up. And I want you to get your focus right. Because where you're sitting right now, it may seem impossible, but that's exactly the situations God walks into. You notice he didn't go to the guy that said, well, I've drugged myself in there three times. It didn't work. <laughs> he went to the guy that had no hope. He could do nothing about his situation. And he walked straight into his life and changed it forever. And so what I'm telling you this morning, it may seem impossible. It may give you anxiety. That's not what God's trying to do. He's not trying to make you anxious over things just because listen, anxiety calls you to zoom in even tighter. So just begin to pray, Lord, you said you'd make me whole. And I believe you can. And I, my response is yes. And I'm standing up today as evidence of that. And Lord, I'll follow you wherever you lead me. And I'll do what you ask me to do because you are making me whole. Amen. Amen. And so when, we, when we're going forward and God asks you to step out and, and, and speak to somebody, I can do it because I'm whole. I'm not sitting by the pity pool anymore. I can do it. When God asks you to give, I can do it now because I'm not sitting by the pity pool. I know he'll provide. When God asks me to do it, I know that I can because he has made me whole. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. God, you have done this. This isn't about us, Lord. You walked into that man's life just like you walk into ours. And you did the impossible. We just respond to it. You made him whole. He just had to stand up. You spoke life into him. He just had to believe it. God, we pray this morning that we get our focus right, that we put the right lens on, we'd have the right lighting. Lord, we'd see you orchestrating all around us for our good. We'd see you, we'd see you doing things that we've never seen before, God, because we were so focused on our problem, but we'd see you working for our benefit. And God, we pray that in the future, Lord, when we... When we have the opportunity, Lord, we'd stand. God, we'd, we'd heed your call. And we'd do what you've asked us to do, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, could you give him honor and praise one more time?